Okay, so good morning uh, and welcome to general finance of uh, May 15th. First, I uh, want to begin by identifying any media on the line. I don't see any media on the line. That'll lead us uh, to our next item, which is any changes or additions or deletions to the agenda. Okay, seeing or hearing none, looking to mover and seconder to adopt our general finance agenda. Moved by Audrey, seconded by Michelle. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, we do have a couple of delegations on our agenda this morning. Our first uh, delegation is Kathy Mayer from the Six Nations Cannabis Commission with a quarterly uh, update. So they do have a presentation uh, for us. So good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Keith. Nice to, uh, to hear you. I'll pass the floor. Uh, or maybe actually just before I do pass the floor over to Kathy, I also want to... Uh, uh, wish everyone, all of our, our mothers and roles, people who play a big role and contribute, I uh, wish everyone had a very happy Mother's Day yesterday. I want to acknowledge all of our all of our women and mothers for that. So over to you, uh, Kathy Mayer. Perfect. Thank you. I don't know if Teresa can, should be in the Dropbox, the PowerPoint presentation, the quarterly update. Sure, we'll uh, ask uh, Teresa to maybe do the share screen. Awesome. If not, I'll begin. <clears throat> so Andy, were you able to locate it in the Dropbox? I no, I don't have access to the Dropbox. Oh, Tammy, the Tammy find it in the Dropbox? Yes, I will, I'll share. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you, ladies. So maybe, uh, Kathy, just uh, you could just give a cue to Tammy when uh, looking to uh, change the, uh, the screens and so forth. Perfect. So over to you, Kathy. Okay, thank you. Okay, this is our update from December 22, 20, uh, last year to March 23rd, or March 2023. I haven't had my first coffee yet. Next, Tammy, please. Uh, in December, we were preparing for... Preparations for all the expenditures for Six Nations Cannabis Commission, organizing everything, preparing for the move. Um, we finally have an office um, at Iroquois Office Suites. So we were um, organizing all of that. We found when we were preparing uh, amongst other things, discovered the um, missing files existed. So we've been working on that with admin to gather that information up and we'll continue to work on that. Uh, we have organized everything now with the help of IT um, and admin. So thank you both for that. In January, our marketing development specialist was hired, Emmett Sherlock. Um, he started towards the end of January. Um, we discussed uh, having a strategic planning session with the commission. Um, there's never been one that I found. So we figured the best way to move forward was first identify where we're going and where we've been. And so uh, we're in um, the first part of that right now. And I can talk more in the next quarterly update about that strategic planning session. Um, I started contacting banks and credit unions to see the possibility of um, opening up a bank account, as you're all aware. Uh, the Six Nations Cannabis Commission cannot open up a bank account at this time. Uh, lots of people have talked. Um, lots of banks have said, okay, I can, uh, let's have another meeting. And you move up the echelon with all the different um, finance people. And then you get a letter at the end saying, sorry, we can't help you. We do, however, have two credit unions who are very interested in working with us. Uh, we've met with the vice president of regional sales twice now. And we're meeting again um, next week with him. He just contacted. 
And so we're hoping that um, this is something that we can um, move forward with. In the meantime, I know the Chief's Office is, has talked about working with different uh, ministries and trying to get this ball rolling because we need a bank account in order to, pe to put the, um, the future revenue into. Uh, right now, it's not safe, um, the structure that is in place right now. Next, Tammy, please, to February highlights. Thank you. Um, we're, we're, we worked with the cannabis education program with a, a for a health video. Um, we haven't seen um, the results of that yet. We're hoping to. I spoke on the video about the role of the Six Nations Cannabis Commission, um, what we're trying to do, our purpose, um, what we hope to do in the future. Um, I met with the social services departments to discuss Six Nations Cannabis Commission. And in cannabis in general, I spoke to a lot of the managers and supervisors there. Um, and that looks like that's, that's going to be a continuing project. I've also spoken with health, some of the health departments, and we have more meetings coming up so that the, we can raise the level of education, um, cannabis education. Um, there's interest growing with potential producers and retailers as... Um, we got ready for a meet and greet uh, trade show. Uh, I went around to every single um, retailer um, that I saw from the road um, on the territory and handed them out an invitation. Out of all, the, we have well over 50 uh, retailers on the territory um, and uh, everybody opened their door up. Nobody kicked me out. It was great. There's some amazing show shops here. Um, they're just, and it's starting the conversation that they want to be legit and they want to be part of the Cannabis Commission. So you're going to see uh, the next quarterly report will have even more producers and retailers on board. Moving into March, we had the meet and greet at um, the um, DevCorp over at the gathering, the gathering Place, yes. And uh, it went over well. We had nearly 50 people from the cannabis industry. Um, attend they had uh, we had our produce our producers at that time had their wares out and we had different people coming through it was specifically for the cannabis industry and we wanted we targeted that like that because there hasn't been anything besides the cannabis cup that's occurred on the territory uh, we met I met with great we have another meeting coming up in um, next month with the board we want to work hand in hand in looking at different programs as far as employment and training opportunities for the people involved with uh, SNCC. Um, Two Rivers um, assisted uh, a licensed retailer to start up their shop. So that's a step in the right direction. And we're hoping that we're going to open up those doors even more for other licensed retailers to be involved with that. We finalized the budget, and as you saw last week, that was um, approved. Thank you to everyone. Uh, strategic planning sessions, they're continuing on. Again, I'll have more information when it's all complete. We now, you'll see it on our website. We have a mission and a vision statement. I haven't memorized that, but when I do, I'll let you know. In the meantime, I'll send it off to everyone. Next, Tammy, for community events. The meet and greet was our first event. Um, it was well attended, no, no media. We invited both counselors, or both papers, sorry. Um, uh, we invited the chief and council, unfortunately only one set regrets. Six Nations Police did attend, health attended, and 38 representatives from the cannabis industry. Um, it started a lot of discussions and uh, we know how we need to rejig it for the future. Our future events, we're looking at a marketing campaign. You'll see that in the papers in the last two weeks, there's a great big survey going out and we'll be having more of, um, we're calling it what's in your cannabis to uh, ask people, challenge people to think about what's in their cannabis because all of our, all of our products are licensed and they're tested. So we know what's in our products and you'll, you'll see that moving uh, forward and getting bigger. Um, 
Every month, the Six Nations Cannabis Commission staff will be involved in different um, events going on in the, in the community. With community awareness, they were involved with uh, health, they were involved with uh, DevCorp, and they're gonna continue to be um, involved. Um, creating relationships with other First Nations. We've had other First Nations contact us about our cannabis um, uh, commission, uh, how we've done it, um, lots of different questions. Um, how they're moving forward with it, the different um, avenues that they're going for. So it's a really good opportunity for us to learn um, from the other First Nations and look at in the future of nation to nation selling because that's just gonna open up the doors for that. The um, create cannabis committee with licensed producers. We'd like to uh, look at this commission being a, a, a vessel for uh, the cannabis industry to get together on a monthly basis or as a need be, but for producers to talk to producers, retailers to talk to retailers, um, and then raising the bar. That's some of the things that we're looking now that we have a, have access here. The uh, next slide, please, Tammy. Revisions to the Six Nations Cannabis Commission laws and regulations. It's now been a few years um, and the landscape of the cannabis industry is quickly changing. Um, and going through the uh, regulations and the law, there's some inconsistencies and contradictory statements in there. We uh, we're going through every section of it, uh, and then we'll bring up all the different areas um, to uh, we'll identify all the areas, and then be, we'll be presenting um, some recommendations for regs. A lot of these um, revisions are based on the current cannabis industry. Um, and it just doesn't, we've, we've changed so much from what we've done three years ago to two years ago to one year ago. And moving forward, there's gonna be even more changes. Um, the, and I think that the cannabis business industry is so new, uh, we don't even know what's on the horizon. Uh, but we need to get this up and running and running uh, effectively and consistently. So you'll see more in the in the papers to come and on all our social media channels. Uh, next slide, please, Tammy. Again, about the bank account. Um, going further into discussion with that, with without a bank account, we all of our dealings has to be with cash because we can't deposit the a check or a money order or anything. Um, with having cash transactions and finance can tell you this, there's lower transparency. It's hard to account for, well, without a number of receipts. Okay, this is how much money I have. And the money that, the revenue that we've received thus far has all been application fees. The revenue from the products will be starting um, in the next few weeks. Um, it creates, not having a bank account creates an unsafe environment for both our, our staff, our fellow tenants, and um, everyone involved. There's the bank accounts um, increase the chance of robberies. Our insurance, we pay 10 times the amount because we, when we can't get tenant insurance, we can only get general liability insurance. And the producers and retailers are asking for this again and again, the importance of having a bank account. Um, this is this question is asked on a weekly basis, and I'm trying with all my might to get something going. So again, with the two credit unions, we're hoping that, but we would really appreciate any advocacy from the chief and the council to move forward on that. On to the testing facility. This is something that is needed moving forward. Um, if we Six Nations had their own testing facility, we'd be one of the few in Canada to have one. It would demonstrate our need for safe and regulated cannabis. Being a uh, cannabis, being involved in the cannabis industry on a First Nations, some testing facilities will not touch you for our retailers. Others will touch you and they'll charge you five times the amount, 10 times the amount. And it's not fair to our licensed or unlicensed producers or retailers. Um, if we had a, a testing facility here, we could do all that testing here it would increase transparency. There'd be a testing facility that 
not only the cannabis and not only SNCC could use, but other people could uh, use and lower the cost for everyone involved with the cannabis industry. We are in um, looking at different avenues of how we can move forward with the testing facility. Um, the next slide, please, Tammy. Thank you. Um, new initiatives. Uh, media campaign begins uh, for education, reducing the stigma involving cannabis and consumer responsibility. Um, working with community organiza organizations uh, for community meetings. The, the staff is now involved in a monthly meeting with all the local community organizations. They meet every month. They meet with health every month. And we're trying to open those doors so there's even more interactions and communications. And then the, the last and most important is testing facility. We need to work more on that and look at the avenues for that. But that concludes the presentation. Any questions? Okay, uh, Nyawa, Kathy, for walking us through your quarterly update. Again, uh, lots of things happening uh, with the commission. I uh, like to see uh, even your new initiatives as well. I know the banking has always been, you know, up on the priority list for advocacy. You know, we've we've touched base on that as well, and some of the uh, alternative routes that we're we're going to be looking at. <clears throat> we know that there's there's things happening at, at both levels as well through the AFN as well as Chiefs of Ontario, but I think uh, it's still uh, you know it's still that political push on uh, the AML regs that that are still the blocking point and stumbling block for us uh, in order to receive uh, an account. So. Those are still things, again, Kathy will maintain communication with you in terms of any progress made on our side of, of things as well. Um, but looking to open the floor up for any further questions or comments to Kathy's uh, presentation. Again, I think there's a lot of good work happening, uh, Kathy. So congratulations to you and, and your commission and your staff, I think. Uh, it was nice to meet with you as well. I know that the, the chief's office met with them a few weeks ago um, and, and was looking at more in depth on how we can further again collaborate on some of these uh, some of these matters. I, I see a couple of hands being raised first over to Greg and then Helen. Oh uh, yeah. Hi, Kathy. Yeah, it looks like you're doing some good work. Um, I just had a just a question about the testing facility on in terms of um, <clears throat> costs to establish that testing facility. I'm sure it's not going to be a, a cheap endeavor. No. Um, <clears throat> one thing is is that um, because it is going to be promoting a, a safe product, and and I commend you on that. You're really pushing that really well, and I, I think that's going to be beneficial overall, both to retailers and to uh, and to uh, customers. The um, and the also, I like I like commend you on knowing your product. I think that's a, a great idea, to you know, so everyone know what they're what they're selling. Mm -hmm. um, the the question I had was, uh, do you think over time that um, that some type of uh, a contribution or uh, even a cooperative could be established to where uh, they may want to, as a retailer, uh, contribute to something towards a either a testing center or something that. Um, will help them actually promote their product. Yeah, we were looking at a couple of different initiatives and we'll, and we'll bring it all forward. Um, one was a cooperative of having uh, producers and retailers, but then we also had discussion about the optics of that. If there were certain people involved in that, are people going to interpret that as they have control over it? If it's a separate entity that's independent of everybody, the test results will be the same. We're just thinking of optics. But there, that was definitely something that we were talking about. We're trying to think of all the, the good, the pros and the cons of each. Great, thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks for that, <clears throat> Greg. Uh, and Kathy, over to you, Helen. Yeah, well, I like your presentation. I think it's very good, you know, short and to the point. Mike, I, I just wondered, how many board members do you have now and who are they? We have four commission, four commissioners. We have Carl Hill. We have Catherine Bumbery. 
We have uh, David Moses. We have an advisor, Michael Commanded, and myself. We are, we are looking for one more. I actually have um, some emails that I have to return messages to of other community members that are interested. We can have up to five commissioners. Okay. Sounds good. I'm ready to thank you, uh, Nyawa, for that. Uh, over to you, I believe I've seen Sherry Lynn, her hand raised. Um, yeah, that was my question, Chief. But I guess my other question would be, um, I know the finances were um, a big discussion in the community and a concern. Uh, what are you doing differently to get a handle on the, the finances? And um, how is it more um, for the community? Thank you. So as far as the finances, the budget was approved uh, last week. That as you, um, from the budget, you can see how I've really, um, am very frugal with the budget because we're not, we're just in the process of moving forward. Uh, we're watching all of our expenditures. And if we are doing any expenditures, I'm very mindful of what they are. Um, some may call me frugal, but I want to make sure that we have enough to move forward. Um, the community contributions, every sale of licensed cannabis goes back, a percentage of every sale of licensed cannabis goes back to the community. So moving forward, when the revenue starts, every single sale goes back to the community. No questions asked. <laughs> I think also just really quickly, if I can add, uh, Kathy is, uh, I know there'll be some amendments um, yes. to the law and regs as well. I know you're the commission and your team are working with uh, uh, the chief's office to bring forward what those amendments uh, look like uh, to get further support and really uh, re-establishing the trust within community. I think that's also further going to uh, overall uh, help with the finances. I think yes. that's another big point to yes. mention. Yes. Sorry, I see a number of hands being raised. Uh, Sherry Lynn, just want to check in with you. If, if um, no, um, thank you for all that, for the clarification. Yep, no problem. Thanks, uh, Kathy. Okay, I have three hands I see so far. I'm going to first begin with Hazel, Audrey, then over to Helen. Hazel, you have the floor. No, I would just like to concur with Helen, uh, Kathy, that your presentation was, I really like that because it is brief and to the point. And that's that's the kind of presentations I like. <laughs> um, as for your handling of this commission now and growing it and uh, uh, looking into the best uh, operation for the cannabis, I think you're really you really sound determined. And I just like to thank you for that because it's been a long time getting off the ground. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Really good words. Uh, thanks for that as well. Uh, Hazel, Audrey, over to you. Uh, thanks, uh, Mark. Uh, good morning, Kathy. How are you? Good, say good. Hello say hello to Carl for us, please. Oh, I will. My question is, how do you plan on distributing the, uh, the profits to back to the community? And have you met with the community last thing? Because I know that council has a big long list of uh, community needs as well. Would you enlighten us, please? So right now in the papers, you'll see that we have a survey. One of the big portions of the survey is about community contributions. We also have a list of our existing retailers and producers who have identified how they see the community, us contributing back to the community. It goes anywhere from home and school to uh, assistance for seniors, um, assistance for working moms, working uh, families, to food bank, to everything in between. So we, we've gener we're generating a list of all the different needs and, um, and seeing how we can move forward with that. Okay, how are we gonna address all this? So we do have a list and we'll bring that forward. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, thanks now for that. Uh, Kathy and Audrey, over to you, Helen. Yeah, I just wanted to give a thumbs up to uh, the commission for significantly reducing the budget. 
I'm sure that hasn't went unnoticed by everybody. So, because there has been a lot of issues in the community about the money that has been spent. So I'm really happy to see that you guys have really reduced that budget. Mm -hmm. And hopefully when you start making money, you can add more to it, but. Yes. I uh, totally concur as well in terms of uh, that budget that was approved uh, last last week. Again, I think it gives Kathy to you, to you and your team, um, again, still the ability to, like you say, move forward. But I think once we uh, further can see, uh, you know, the revenues increase, obviously, then that gives more opportunity, uh, you know, with the, say, for example, the testing facility and so forth. So I do agree as well. Okay, is there any any further questions or comments for Kathy's uh, quarterly update? Okay, I'm not seeing any hands uh, being raised at this point in time, so I will look for the. There is a recommendation on the uh, on the agenda. Uh, again, that just reads to uh, accept. Uh, as information, uh, the Six Nations Cannabis Commission's quarterly update, looking to a mover in seconder to that recommendation. I'll move Mark Hazel. Okay, it's moved by Hazel and seconded by Helen. Are there any final questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, Kathy, well, again, do appreciate you coming uh, in front of council again, uh, and we'll uh, again continue this work together. Thank you. Yawa, yeah, well, have a good day. Yeah. Okay, council, we're gonna continue moving on uh, on our agenda. I believe, I believe Lauren Jones, I don't see her online. Is there a Lauren Jones, Teresa? This is in relation to the gypsy moth spring. Yeah, I believe she was online. Wait, actually, yeah, I don't see her on there. Okay. Sorry, uh, I'll look to so Lauren Jones. So she's this wildlife and stewardship manager. Uh, going to be speaking on the gypsy moth spring. So hopefully we can get her back online uh, for that uh, overview. So maybe Teresa, if you'd like to, can you send her an email? And in the meantime, we'll uh, we'll move on and come back to her once she's signed back in. Uh, okay, council. So uh, we'll, as that's happening, we'll move on to the adoption of the general finance minutes. Uh, of May the 1st. I'll move on a minute, Chief. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Carrie. It's moved by Carrie. Is there a seconder? I can. Seconded by Michelle. Are there any further questions or comments in relation to the minutes? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Uh, the next item that we have is under environment. Uh, I believe we have Rod Whitlow on the call. I'll look to, good morning, uh, Rod. I believe you'll, you're will you speaking to this item. If you can maybe give a high level yes. overview. Good morning. Good morning, yeah, good morning. Rod. Good morning. I'll pass the floor over to yourself. Okay. So yeah, the Ontario Geological Survey approached uh, the Environmental Task Force with an invitation to participate in what they're calling ambient groundwater geochemistry program. So I know it's a mouthful. Um, there's two uh, presentation decks that were provided to uh, Teresa and they're in the Dropbox. We didn't plan to go through um, the technical presentations today. They did. They were presented to the Environmental Task Force and the Task Force came back and recommended that we 
um, council approve um, further exploration of the opportunity to participate in this initiative. Um, just a, a few quick background notes is how it came about is some of you may be aware that there was a fatality in Brant County and it had it pertained to exposure to high levels of hydrogen sulfide. So what had happened is uh, there was a deep drilled well, uh, the resident pumped the water from that well into kind of like a shallow uh, well, which for the most part, a large um, portion of the community here has where are called board or dug wells, which are 40, 40 foot wells. Um, so, and when the resident went down in to the, uh, the shallow well, um, the levels were so high that it, uh, it resulted in a fatality. So the province of Ontario um, tried to connect with, with us here at Six Nations and just to make us aware, I think we got something from uh, Brant County Health Unit as well. And the family of the, of the resident that, that uh, died from this unfortunate fortunate circumstance, they also wanted to reach out to Six Nations because they are in close proximity to, to us. And they felt, felt like the geo, geophysical um, characteristics um, in Brant County were similar to similar to what they are here. So that was kind of the origin of how uh, we got on um, making all these connections to these various entities. There was a company called Matrix Solutions. Uh, and so they, they presented to the Environmental Task Force as well. So the long short of it is uh, uh, the Ontario, Ontario, Ontario Geological Survey has surveyed um, most of Southern Ontario, with the exception of sections of Brant County and Six Nations. So for whatever reason, over the, the decades, they just did not do the work here, probably because it's under provincial jurisdiction. But it's an opportunity now. They're willing to, to um, initiate this, this assessment here. It's a, it's a hydrogeological assessment of not only dug wells and uh, drilled wells, um, so that we can deter get a, a better sense of um, of the water chemistry. So they they're planning on testing, I think, uh, up to ninety nine uh, parameters um, free of charge. So it is a it's a it's a lab intensive sampling program, and so the recommendation from the task force was that it, this information is actually really worthwhile. It ties in not only to the, to the class action settlement, but to the fact that um, no one from our community should be drinking. The well water, untreated well water, whether it's a bored well or a drilled well, um, there's been studies over over the years that just demonstrate the quality is too poor. Um, so, it, so if we do access this this provincial program. They will plan to come this summer to test. Uh, we'll we'll have to set up a grid system across the community, and we'll have to select um, uh, one bored well and one drilled well in each test plot, and then they'll run the tests. Uh, as I mentioned, there's there's nine categories of parameters that they're going to test. Um, again, it's free of charge, and then it will just provide some more information um, for the community at large to, and then it, it, it ties in too with our water security. So whether it's, if we're gonna update the 2019 community plan, where exactly are, where does the water security um, uh, reality fit into that that community plan. How long is it going to take us to connect everyone in the community to the to the treated water from the Oshawa Water Treatment Plant? And if it's decades in in the works, then there's still going to be households that rely on groundwater. And so the the compilation or the collection of this information for the groundwater quality and, and to a certain degree quantity um, that will help us determine if the other measures are going to be need it in the interim until everyone's um, connected to to the, the treated water. So that's kind of the, the gist of it. Uh, it's just very exploratory right now. Um, again, the recommendation is that we proceed because it is, it, it, we're gonna have to put some parameters around um, access to the information. So the OCAP principles, um, so that's not kind of used against us or, it's, or we're just not being used to fill an information gap so they can make other decisions for surrounding municipalities, whether it's Niagara or Norfolk uh, or, or Brantford or higher, higher up in the, um, in, the, in the Grand River watershed. So yeah, there will be some uh, access to information parameters um, and going forward with, with, the, with the sampling and the, and the testing of the wells. So it's, it's, a test, it's basically testing of the wells for, for, that's the gist of it. And we can come back to, to full council as, as we roll out, we will have to do a community awareness um, 
uh, launch some community awareness around around this just to get people aware and and uh, find some homes that are willing to participate. So that's kind of it in a, in a nutshell. Okay, uh, now for that high level overview, uh, Rod, to this matter, I do have a number of hands raised. I'll first begin with uh, Nathan, over to Audrey, and then Greg. Uh, Nathan, you have the floor. Yeah, just to add to Rod's um, uh, great presentation there, um, one of the uh, things we discussed at the task force was to ensure that, you know, we have a, a working group in place to respond because uh, a lot of the findings might cause further angst and, and uh, kind of concern at the community level. Uh, so we put this kind of interdepartmental kind of working group together to, to mitigate a lot of those concerns going forward so that at the end of the day, um, the information flow, as Rod said, um, goes out to the community um, so that we're also addressing the concern as we're collecting the information. So um, the only other kind of point um, just to emphasize is the, the importance of the intergovernmental or sorry, the interdepartmental kind of approach, uh, ensuring that health is there and, and all of the uh, social services so that the programming is also kind of coming behind the, the research that's being done here. Um, and, and that's something uh, that we wanted to ensure was in place. And as Rod's kind of indicated, this is very exploratory at this point in time um, going forward. Third thing was uh, around the data collection. So important that uh, as we continue to kind of uh, put forward the case for the class action that we collect the data. Um, and uh, and uh, this, this project also helps collect data and collects data for that class action going forward. Uh, so I didn't really have any questions, uh, Chief, but for the purposes of uh, discussion, I'll move, uh, I'll move this recommendation. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that, uh, Nathan. I do have a mover on the floor look, calling for a seconder, and then we'll go back to questions and comments. Seconded by Audrey. Uh, further questions and comments? I will start with you, Audrey. Back over to Greg, Hazel, and then Carrie. Audrey, you have the floor. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Mark. Uh, good presentation, Rod. And it's really good to know that we've been invited for this and um, it might be last thought, but it, at least we're thought of. And uh, I think I commend the uh, environmental group for putting this um, mitigation group together. But my question is, who pays? So if there are, well, we know there are many things wrong with our groundwater and especially our well water. I have two wells that are capped off because of high contaminants. So Who's going to pay for all of that? Is that up to the homeowner or is there any kind of relief from the, the, the government? Yeah. Uh, if I can answer that real quickly, um, just reflecting on how we've approached it in the past is I guess it, it's up to the, the respective um, property owners if they have to seal their 40 foot dug well. So we, we know of a couple residents that had to get rid of the the, the dug well and put in a drilled well. And that costs, the cost to do that is, um, I guess there's, they can go through a housing loan program, but there's no dedicated program to, to, to decommission that well. Um, I did go through some of the environment archives. And so uh, quite a few years ago, there was a, po a draft policy um, that Clint King had worked on and it went to uh, Jan, Jan Burning. Um, to just to try to figure out a, a policy or a, a best approach in, tr in terms of how to try to decommission these um, these abandoned water wells. Um, and right now, as far as I know, there's there's no government funding or there's no program in place to provide um, that kind of funding uh, aside from what they might be able to get through an interest free loan or something from from housing. But I'll, I'll have to defer to housing for for any program along those lines. Now for that, uh, Rod, uh, going back to the speakers uh, list, over to you, Greg. Yeah, hi, Rod. Yeah, good presentation. Um, yeah, it's good to see also, too, that, you know, you're going to make the community aware that this is going to happen. I think that's important that people know that people will be coming to test the water and it's it's going to be a good thing. Um, the other thing is, is that... Um, 
And the question I had is, um, will this will this study tell uh, our community members that um, how safe their individually, how safe their drinking water is? That was one question, and that what uses they can have for that that type of water. My second question was um, the contaminants. Is there will this study show or determine the source, the original source of these contaminants, and, and where they're coming from? Those were my two questions. Thanks. Yeah. So for the first question, I um, for how safe it is. So you might recall from the briefing notes from the class settlement. They, they had like three categories, uh, boil water advisory, do not drink, um, and I think do not consume. So there's, depending on whether you're using it to flush the toilet or wash dishes or cook with it, there's different um, criteria that they follow in that regard. So for the most part, um, you might recall the, um, the, the new directions had that self-help thing where you could go pick up the water sample bottle and then they would ship it to a provincial lab over in Simcoe, I think, and that would come back and say you had coliform or E. coli and it would tell you um, to boil it. So the boiling part of it will remove the bacteria. Um, and then sometimes Peter Hill or before him it was Paul Strzok said pour a bottle of bleach down your well. That will kill the bacteria. It will not remove the heavy metals or the other contaminants. And so that's that's the main point that we have to to drive home is that over the de over the decades there have been studies. Um, and I, I, I do I, we do have a draft a briefing note on source water protection. So um, and it goes into a little bit more detail about um, you know how safe is the water to drink. A lot of people have uh, if they have a drilled well, they have to have a water softener because of the high iron content. Um, and then there's all kinds of other stuff <laughs> in the water that uh, most people don't find. They, it, you, you'll get a, a letter back saying from Peter, Peter Hill saying, we've done a comprehensive chemical analysis of your water. And he'll tell you, um, he'll go through and say, this one has like uh, this, it, 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 basically aesthetic reasons, like this, the sulfur smell. And he'll go, it'll go back and forth. For There's been levels where there's been heavy metals above um, above um, drink, safe drinking water guidelines where we have seen letters where it says, do not drink this water, um, do not cook with it, do not consume it. So we do have, we do have documentation along those lines. Um, and then as, as for the source, it's, 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 that's not really not determined because we don't have a source water protection regime, which, which would basically govern land-based acti land activities and water-based activities that could seep into a well. Because we don't have that, we, it's really hard to predict where the source of the contaminant is coming from. Some of it might be endemic, like deep in, in the ground. What they're saying is there's, um, um, there could be arsenic, there could be hydrocarbons, there could be, because of the abandoned gas wells. <clears throat> so that, that cross-references with that program as well. So we are going to try to um, relaunch that abandoned gas well program this summer. So there could be any number of, of contaminants. Uh, where, where the contaminants are coming from and getting into the well water. Some of them could be naturally occurring deep in the, in the ground based on the quality of the aquifer. And some of them could be um, non-point so source pollution, like washing off, off fields and, and whatnot. A lot of the, um, we know that a lot of the, the 40 foot dug wells do not have proper uh, sealing of the tiles and they have to be so many feet above ground level and they have to be properly sealed and they have to have what's called a vermin proof lid so that uh, contaminants can't get in there. We know that a lot of the well husbandry aspect of it is there's a big gap there as well. And there's, there seems to be some program through housing uh, to, to try to upgrade the wellheads to, to prevent the contaminants from getting in. But again, it's, it's probably not nearly enough. Um, and we've never really done a, a community-wide scope of, of what the need is there as well. So I'll, I'll stop there. I know there's a, a lot to unpack. Uh, just a follow-up, Chief? Uh, no, I was just trying to get to a point where um, it would be uh, just generally a um, an easy an easy method for all our members to um, to look at their water. Um, one is is that um, if we could make it say, okay, listen, on our reserve we um, we have to boil all well water, or we can only use it for this type of use, rather than being determined. Well, you've got this in it, you've got that in it. It gets a little bit confusing. I was just trying to simplify it for, for our Six Nations members that across the, the territory, maybe 
it's uh, you should do one, two, or three, and that's it, um, or even use it, uh, not use it for any consumption at all, and then um, and then basically work from there. That's all. I was just trying to make it simple for uh, for our members to follow. So thank you. Yeah, I I understand that we we've, we've heard that kind of um, request as well, and just in terms of, but there's so many people that we talk to that just basically do not don't trust the well water. So that's why we have all of these. Um, people buying bottled water. Um, and so it's just, there's just a, a, a generational mistrust. Um, you can only use it for certain things. So Great. that's Thank a, the unfortunate part. Great. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Sorry, I do uh, see uh, Helen as well, but I, I do want to go back to the speakers uh, list. I have Hazel and Q next, and then Carrie and then Helen. Uh, Hazel, you have the floor. Yeah, um, I was just wondering, with this analysis and uh, what's going to be happening as far as uh, testing these wells, would this not be uh, a factor that could make a hastier decision to allow Six Nations in on that water, the existing water um, class action that's happening? Because we haven't been given any... Um, feedback as to whether they're going to allow Six Nations in yet, right? So yeah. wouldn't this have a great impact on that factor alone? This, like if, um, just wait, I write, see what I wrote down here. I think it would um, help with a, a quicker decision for allowing Six Nations in. And because this is, um, this is very concerning, uh, the impact of, especially a person passing away from, from the uh, chemical that would be included in the water. So that's basically my question. Would it impact that class action? Thanks. So I, if I, I probably could de defer a little bit to, to Tammy on this. We did get some correspondence back from the claim settlement. So you know that they did extend the deadline for applications for one year. Um, they have asked for some more information and we're, we're probably going to have to do an interdepartmental um, uh, work, working group just to try to fill in the, the chart that they, they want. But again, they're, they seem to be defaulting to the community system. So they'll look at records and say, well, the people on Ashwigan were told not to, to boil their water, but it didn't last the one year threshold. But what they seem to be missing, and we've been trying to drive this message home, is that upwards of two thirds of the community are on private systems. We're not on the Ashwigan distribution system. So again, there'll be some the political positioning that could emerge from this whole process. So it is gonna be beneficial in that, maybe just to emphasize that we need to fast track connecting every single home to the distribution system. If the, if the timelines are, they can only do so many houses per, per year. Well, under human rights to water and sanitation and, and whatnot, um, those rights are being violated here at Six Nations until, until every single household has access to clean potable water. Anyway, I, there's a, I know there's a lot more context there, but I'll, I'll stop there. Yeah, I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head, Rod, just exactly in terms of, of of what we have to do in terms of the next steps of getting added to the impacted First Nations list. So that was the latest, uh, Hazel, to your question. I know that Tammy did receive um, um, some notice of further further documentation needed, and that's what Rod's referring to, is really having that, the interdepartmental uh, approach to that. And, and I would say to your question, Hazel, yes, most definitely can, can certainly add to um, you know, the importance of getting uh, on the impact of First Nations lifts just based on this conversation and discussion. Yeah, that's true. Okay, thank you very much. Yep, you're welcome. So we'll continue to keep updated as as we now go to this next report where the administrator is requesting. Uh, Kerry, and then over to Helen. Kerry, you have the floor. Yeah, um, Rod, is, is there any way of knowing if the underground streams are connected, whether they be drilled or bored, and would they be? Yeah. So that is part. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, that is part of this. Um. This this program is because it's a geological 
um, groundwater geo geochemistry. So that's what they're trying to figure out. So there's overburden and then there's aquifers and then part of this will do, it might be involved some mapping and um, it will help determine the connection between the aquifers. So some of them are conf confined aquifers. We do have glacial features here. So we have drumlins, which are basically hard clay and a little bit of gravel. The ones that are the, the, the geology that's most prone to, to active recharge is ones that have sand and gravel. And there's very few locations here in the community that have that. We have the, the heavy clay. And that's why these people that have these 40 foot dug wells, if there's no snow in the winter time, the slow recharge it percolate to get percolate through that clay, it just doesn't recharge those wells. So basically they're unsealed um, cisterns is what those 40 foot dug wells basically are is because if they're not properly sealed, they're not holding the water anyway. But um, that that is the unfortunate part of it is that we don't have that part of this project or this program will help determine um, some, I, I close some of the information gaps that they have around the geology um, here at Six Nations. And, and so we, we also don't know if, if they would be connected to uh, a large source of water, like say maybe a lake or a river. Do you know what uh, I'm saying? Yeah, th that, they, yeah, yeah. So they're, they're called underground rivers, you're right. They're aquif aquifers, but the geology will, it, there's another term they use is aquitard. So if there's something that's preventing the movement of the water, and that was the thing, the, the big concern too, when, when the province of Ontario issued all these commercial permits to take water, we kept posing the questions, how do you know there's gonna be enough water if you allow these water bottle companies to extract the water? And they would say, oh yeah, we've done 3D mapping, we've done the geology. It turns out that they didn't actually have that information. And that's why they're coming to Six Nations now is they don't actually have, um, for our little track of land here at Grad River, they don't have that, that information is missing. So we don't actually know uh, until they do, until they close the information gap in terms of what, the, what is the geology, the, lo, the geo, geology under Six Nations as to how, how, how these uh, aquifers might be connected or is there some confined ones. We do know that because of all of the, the over 200 abandoned gas wells that when Robert Dennis drilling drills a well, sometimes they'll hit a, they'll hit ga a gas. And that's, it could be linked to an abandoned gas well. And that's why you have water geysers that shoot up out of the air and some of them don't subside for a couple of days. And that's why is the gas is pushing that water upward. And then he'll, what they'll do is they'll just move to a, a few hundred feet away and they'll put the drilled well in there. So there's all kinds of geological um, considerations as well that we have to, hopefully this, this um, program will allow us to start connecting the dots. Um, between all of these geophysical features. Okay, thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks for that as well, uh, Rod. Over to you, Helen. Well, we know a lot of people in our community are buying water and they're buying water from our water treatment plant, most of them. So I think it's really important to get the message across that we're talking about groundwater, not water that you buy. It's the groundwater that's contaminated and it's the groundwater that's contaminating a well, not the water that you're buying from the water treatment plant. I think that's really important message to get across to people because if we're testing somebody's well and we're saying your water is no good, they're getting it from the water treatment plant. You know, and right away they're thinking our water treatment plant ain't doing nothing, it's no good and all this kind of stuff. So it's really important to make sure we're concentrating on groundwater. And it's the groundwater, yeah, like I, I said, see. that's contaminating the bot water that they, the water they buy. If they yeah, get it from a water so treatment just real, plant. So yeah, so just, real quickly on... That, that one is, you know how you, we see people with the makeshift, um, they carry all their own water. There's, there has to be a sanitation program. So the bacteria can still stay, stay in those plastic containers. So if they're, if they're going to public works and they're filling up their makeshift um, water hauling um, 
container, there, there has to be a, a sanitation program to rinse those out and to rinse out their cisterns. That to, one of the studies that I read, they did actually find coliform, not E. coli, but coliform, which is from fecal contamination in cisterns, which means that there has to be a sanitation program there as well. So, and I, I have to defer to health services and to Kelly Gordon's team for, for more information about all of that. But yeah, you, you're exactly right, Councillor Helen, is that there has, there has to be more awareness so that people don't automatically have a mistrust when they're not just testing something that is, it, the water is safe to begin with. But at the same time, there has to be a sanitation program as well. Yeah, because I've heard people say, how can my well be contaminated? I get it from the public works. But there's also another issue with, with people getting it from public works and with the water chucks. You're supposed to sanitize those hoses and those tanks on a regular basis. I don't doubt if people do that. Um, they just take those white things down there and fill them up. But you're supposed to you're supposed to sanitize those on a regular basis. A water truck is supposed to sanitize their hoses on a regular basis. And I don't know whether they do that either. So there's other issues that can come into play to someone's well-being contaminated. And we need to address all of those issues because you can't just say, my water's no good. And, oh, I bought it from the water treatment plant. So it's got to be, you know, then right away they start blaming the water treatment plant. So there's a lot of issues around that. And we need to address them all when we're going out to the community because we don't want to be passing you know, different messages and there's so many things that contaminate your well. And like you said, the people don't have good tops. You know, they have holes or they don't have good tops and that can, so when we're gonna go out marketing or, or campaigning or whatever about the wells, we need to include everything. This, it could be this, it could be that, it could be this. That's just, you know, what I think, because we hear so much negative comments about our water treatment plant. Even now with the state-of-the-art water treatment plant, people are saying our water is no good. So, you know, I really want to support our water treatment plant. You know, I, I totally agree. And I think that's a good, good point, uh, Helen, that you're raising. Um, and, and perhaps uh, even we'll further work with Nathan in uh, the Environment Task Force uh, with Rod, just so that we can have that clear messaging uh, as what you're referring to, Helen, uh, and be really, um, you know, the, the other point is that it can't, it can't be too, too long either. So it's gotta be direct messaging on these pieces. Cause I know a lot of the times, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get lost sometimes when we're over over messaging, so I, I think it's 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 really having those strategic communications. So definitely, we'll work with the task force uh, in developing and assisting what that looks like. Is there any uh, over to Melba. you, Melba? Yeah, I I'm very concerned, like everyone else is, concerning the water issues that we are been faced with for so many years. I'm questioning how the schools are taken care of, considering that there's so uh, numerous uh, children in the school system. Uh, we used to have the fountains and it was free to, to use and safe, I guess, years ago. How is that being handled right now? Like Helen had said, you know, people are not uh, really cleaning their pipes out or their containers out and um, on a regular basis. What about uh, how the water comes into the schools. Are the pipes being cleaned, for example? You know, how is that managed right now? I think that's a really, really good question, um, Melba. Uh, I I can't answer that question in terms of what's happening right now. As we know, that's through our Public Works Department, but maybe, maybe I'll look to Rod to see if he can assist uh, in this question. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess each of, it depends on the school, right? So some of the schools have their own wells and, um, so, you know, the everlasting tree school, 
they, they, they're on a private distribution water treatment system. Um, I guess it depends on the, the school and the source of the, of the, the school, but um, because the schools, I guess you would think that there'd be a regular monitoring program. I'm assuming that there would be through maybe through Peter Hill's office. It's something that we'll follow up with, with Peter and maybe Michael Montour might know as well, but um, I, don't, I don't have the information offhand as to this, the situation at the schools. Uh, same, same okay, James, I just want to follow up from that, please. Yeah, the class action, as we know, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be a while before things are resolved uh, to our benefit, hopefully. Um, again, back to um, the school system um, and the community. I think somehow there should be free water coming to the community or bought for us. It's numerous... Uh, numerous debts that people had and no doubt I've heard them say you know no I drink my in fact Helen has mentioned that she's she's uh drinks her water and and she's not sick you know so how many people think that way because maybe the sickness takes some time before it it actually affects us in a in a really uh difficult way so I'm just wondering how we might be able to get free water coming to this community or buying it off of the local water water company here. I think we should be looking into that, especially the ones who have had their water tested and know uh, completely how it's affected their water system and in uh, not consuming the water, unable to. So I wonder if we could look at that somehow. Thanks. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Melba. And, uh, again, uh, more good suggestions. I know last uh, time we had uh, done that was during COVID, if you can recall. Um, we did purchase uh, an, an amount or, or allocate an amount for for water to be delivered to homes, um, and so we can definitely. I know there's we have the the data for that, so I know that can be a starting point uh, in terms of the cost, and then where source of funds can be identified if we do choose to go down that route and what that looks like. So again, uh, Melba, we can further follow up and, and do some more due diligence on that uh, and then hopefully uh, be able to have obviously the input and feedback from the task force as well to see how that could potentially be uh, be built out. Thank you. Okay, thanks uh, for that, um, Melba. Sorry, I just want to check in with Kiri. Kiri, did you uh, have another question or comment or was your hand raised from the last comment question oh okay so then that leads me to audrey yeah mine just a quick question i would like an update not not today on water coming down from uh, number six highway from the lake lake erie and that if we could get that project i uh, guess speed it up i think if we have more of the reserve covered if you come down first line, second line, and wherever thir third line, if um, it, it's needed there. So that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay, thanks, uh, Now for that, Audrey, and we'll definitely uh, follow up on that piece. I know we did last have a meeting with both, uh, you know, getting the new mayor caught up, Mayor Bentley, and as well as uh, Mayor Martin of Norfolk, because uh, as you know, uh, that project was uh, obviously going to help right away in the Norfolk County that was primarily the Port Dover area as they are like at max capacity as it is and then obviously would help the south the south side service of our territory uh, I think last time uh, through that presentation was roughly about uh, 12 1200 to 1500 homes that could be uh, you know expedited in that process so we'll we'll definitely follow up on that uh, initiative. Uh, is there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, it's been moved and seconded uh, already. I'll look to the vote. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive uh, second reading. Moved by Audrey, seconder. Oh, second. Seconded by Nathan to waive second reading. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. 
Okay, now I rod for uh, for bringing this to uh, the forefront and we'll again continue to work with you on our next steps. So thank you so much. Have a great day. Uh, we're going to continue moving on uh, the agenda uh, council. Sorry, Teresa, just before I move on to the donation requests that were deferred uh, from our last general finance, have you been able to contact or get in, in touch with Lauren? No, she didn't. She hasn't logged in. Okay, so uh, is was there a recommendation that you're aware of for that? Because I know Gypsy Moths, I don't see it on the agenda here. No, no, not that I'm aware of. Okay, sorry, maybe I'll just check uh, in. Chief? Yep. Uh, it was basically that um, while well, she hadn't gotten hold of me after we, we talked to Paul Robertson and she, it was basically a recommendation to, 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 to spray and he sent an estimate and he, he, he thought that we should get at it as soon as possible. He said, well, the leaves are coming out now and he thought maybe early this week if we if we made a decision because uh, um well the amount uh, so i don't i don't know if all the council got the the information that was sent over i think uh darren sent me a reply saying that it would be on council but maybe just this item i don't know if all the the briefing notes got there too i think so but, but basically the recommendation was to To go ahead and, and and spray, but it was like it's it's up to council to, because I know at one point there was money in the OFNLP earmarked for for this project, but right now the amount is not less than a, what was in the in the budget. Thank you, uh, Nella, for that, uh, Carrie. And that was, uh, I guess, my point is to uh, I know this is usually a time sensitive. Uh, matter and so looking to uh, Darren. I see Darren has his hand raised. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Um, just looking through the emails, Carrie, and yeah, it was it was uh, shared um, last week. Uh, there is a recommendation. Uh, it didn't. It wasn't put into a briefing note. So I was kind of hoping that Lauren was available to speak to it in terms of her considerations uh, and whether it's a. An appropriate recommendation, but it was basically a single application for an estimated 6,800 acres. They've got the areas targeted through mapping. Uh, it's roughly $322,000 for 65. So it's not nearly the, the extensive applications we've done in the past, which were considerably more than that. So this is a targeted application. So I don't know whether council wishes to consider that today, given the time sensitivity. I would defer to Jennifer and Wayne. Um, obviously, it would come out of OFNLP dollars, so it would definitely be a council decision. So uh, that's the information I have, Chief, on that. Thank you, Nyawa, for that, Darren. And I think uh, just, you know, council, we have made and done these. It's not like it's nothing new. Uh, and so I think perhaps we can uh, make that decision uh, today, just uh, again, in terms of the time uh, sensitivity uh, to the matter. Uh, Hazel, and then over to Audrey. Yeah, I know we spoke about this before when he did that uh, presentation. And as I recall in that meeting, um, I think it was myself that made the comment about like, we always have to be ahead of these um, infestation of these uh, whatever, because I, I would hate to see our trees get to the point where they did a few years back when there was no leaves in the summertime. I think we should always be ahead of this game and keep, um, it's gonna cost money to do it, we have to do it. So I'll make a motion to pay that amount and to go ahead with that spraying. And it's based on the fact that I don't wanna see all our leaves eaten off the trees again. Thank you. I do appreciate that. There's a mover uh, motion on the floor to move forward with the gypsy moth uh, targeted spray in the amount. And again, Darren can assist on the amount of roughly $322,000. Is there a seconder? Second? I'd be happy to second that. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. I'm going to, I want to go with uh, Audrey 
if that's okay, Carrie, as a second, I know she beat you to the to the punch, but I think she also further has question comment. Uh, over to you, Audrey. Yeah, I was second with a with a question, and my question is, why is it just a selected area? Is it because that area is the most in, likely to be in in uh, fested? Rob, anybody got an answer for me? Yep, sorry, uh, just for my, or sorry, maybe Carrie can, can add to this, but from my understanding and re recollection from the last uh, conversation uh, or, or presentation uh, is that that would lay out where the most infested areas are. Uh, so that was the first phase to that, and that this is now the second phase of, of moving forward with those areas. Correct me if I'm wrong, Carrie? Yeah, he did a, a very thorough um, egg mass count and there are some places that, well, didn't require spraying because there was zero egg mass. So that was the reason why he, it was kind of select. Uh, a lot of it's kind of like on the south, uh, southwest and a little bit down on the north, northeast. But for the, the ones that he said that didn't need spraying were the ones that it was zero egg mass count. Yeah, well, Carrie. Yep. Okay. Now for that, and uh, and what we'll do uh, if the with once the motion is is passed, council is uh, work with our comms uh, to make sure that there's a, 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 a as as quick and thorough notice to our community members in those targeted areas that this will be happening. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll get that uh, going as well in terms of communications. Is there any further questions or comments to the motion, uh, Kiri? Uh, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Yeah, Chief, just one more is as it gets closer to uh, Paul with, um, with uh, Zimmer Air would, would target, would give us the dates and, and that app time will be notified comms or whoever just to let them know that tomorrow or the day after, whenever the time comes that they'll be, they'll be spraying. That's, that's perfect. Thanks uh, now for that, uh, Kerry. Um, over to you, Melba, and then I see Wayne has his hand raised. Melba? Yeah, yeah, I just wonder how community also can be involved because there was ways that community could help prevent or actually kill some of the some of the gypsy mobs that were already formed. And I wonder if that can go out to the community because a lot of them certainly would want to help if they could. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that, Mel. But uh, again, we'll work with uh, Paul and his team to, uh, to again, communicate any of that uh, if there is, um, you know, opportunity for our members to also assist, uh, you know, in the bigger picture to the Gypsy Moth. Um, Wayne. Uh, thanks, Chief. Yes, if we can just add to the motion for clarity purposes that the funds will be utilized from the OFNLP fund. Perfect. Thank you for that. Uh, now for that, Wayne. So if we can include that uh, to the motion of sources, source, funds of source identified as the OFNLP. Looking to any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, it's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to waive second reading. Move. Moved by Hazel, seconded by Audrey to waive second reading on the previous motion in relation to Gypsy Moss. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, Council, we're going to continue moving along here. Uh, the next item we have is in relation to donation requests. Uh, this is again was deferred uh, from our May 1st general finance meeting. Uh, so maybe if I can just really quickly um, check in, I believe with Jennifer or Wayne on this, there was three, um, there was three, three donations that had come in for request. Uh, one was the second annual gathering for the survivors secretariat. Uh, as well as the NAG, uh, North American Indigenous Games 2023. Uh, and then finally, the U-17. I'll speak to it, Denver. The U-17 hockey team. Okay, I'll pass the floor over to yourself, uh, Wayne. Uh, yes. 
Phoenix Chief. Um, so there, um, we did look into it, and yeah, there are um, some various funding sources available. We just need to finalize the amounts. And I know Tammy was working on that with uh, the organizations and the groups, I hope. <laughs> okay, so thanks, uh, Nyawa, for that. Wayne, I do see the different source, uh, the funds, uh, source of funds identified. So maybe I'll just check in. Uh, Tammy, uh, was there any further conversations uh, with any of the groups to add in the amounts? You can use mine. Okay, so I do recommend for the survivor secretary at $5,000. The other groups I haven't been in touch with as of yet, but I can do some follow up with today. Okay, and now for that, I know I know there was this uh, on the U17 as well, and uh, Councillor Michelle had brought that forward for either uh, rings or jackets or recognition on that piece. So that'd be good to at least get an amount so that we. Uh, are, are, are can include that within that motion. Um, I have Helen and then Melba. Yeah, for the donations like this, especially for the, uh, the sports teams and the tournaments or whatever, we used to get a budget. And then we would always ask them to list how much the money they had raised fundraising. Is this being done with these? Yeah, so that's 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 part of the due diligence of contacting the teams. So we still have to do that work, Helen, in order to get to that that numbered point. Um, Melba. Yes, I'll move on the survivor secretariat in the amount of five thousand. Okay, do appreciate that. It's been moved by Melba. Is there a seconder? I'll second Sherry Lynn. Seconded by Sherry Lynn. And again, this is for their second annual gathering, uh, which is happening uh, next mm -hmm. month. So we'll uh, we'll cross this one off and then we'll continue to work uh, with those. Uh, again, looking to see how many athletes we have in the NAG games and as well working with, to Helen's point, with the uh, U-17 hockey team, because uh, I know that one was more in, Lent, in a sense of um, their championship. Uh, that they had won. So uh, it's moved and seconded in relation to the survivor secretariat in the amount of $5,000. Is there any further questions or comments? Okay, seeing or hearing none, all in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Motion to oh. waive. Oh, I'm not sorry. opposed. I had my hand up, but I'm not opposed. Yeah. I just I, have a question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Helen. The one that says North American Indigenous Games in the amount of blah to be funded for sports teams. Does that mean it's going to cover different teams too? So they all can't come here and ask for money because now we're giving them a lump sum? So th that, that is just in, in relation to the source of funds identified under. So that's just from OFNLP. So there's a, there's a line item for sports teams. So that's just identifying the source of funds so that's where we're working with or need to work with to see how many athletes we have uh, that have been selected for the NAG games the games that way we can again just go across the board so to your point yes they won't all be coming back we'll do it all at once okay it's been uh, passed the last resolution can i wave uh, looking to a mover and seconder to wave second reading on the survivor secretariat Donation I'll move Melba. Moved by Melba. Seconder. I'll second it. Seconded second. by Greg. Oh, thanks, uh, Sherilyn. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing none, motion is carried. Okay, council. So we'll work again uh, with the those two organizations and bring back again uh, a, a suitable amount uh, to be donated. Um, the next item then we have is under scheduling. Uh, this one is uh, looking for a delegate from council to attend uh, the grand reopening of Rexall Pharmacy located in Caledonia. Uh, it will be happening on May 19th at 8.30 a.m. So I'm looking for a counselor if anyone is available to attend. Uh, we did receive an invitation to attend that grand reopening. Is there any interest or availability? Okay, thank you for I'll that. Attend. It's Melba. 
Okay, thank you, Nyawa and Melba, for that. Uh, looking to a, a mover and seconder for Melba to attend the grand reopening of the Rexall Pharmacy. I'll move, Shirley. Moved by Sherry Lynn, seconder. Seconded by Hazel. Seconded by Hazel, Nyawa for that. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing in motion is carried. Question, comment, Helen? Yeah, I've, I've said this before over the years and I still feel the same way that, you know, we get invited to all of these things. I don't know why we have to be there. We get invited to all these things that it, it's just, they just do that because I guess they think they have to because of reconciliation because nobody seems to know what reconciliation means. And I never ever like us having to do that. It, I, it's like a token. We're just tokens standing there. And there's so many people that do that. It's the same as the land acknowledgement. I don't agree with the land acknowledgement either. Um, Cause they think they're doing something wonderful by acknowledging our land. The only good thing I liked about the land acknowledgement is the lady that was singing the, the Canada's national anthem. But anyway, that's just my feelings on these. I never agreed with us participating in all these different things because that's all it is. I mean, what does Rexall Pharmacy need us there for? I don't know. Anyway, that's just my thoughts. I I, I definitely hear you on, on those sentiments, uh, Helen. I think, uh, you know, we could definitely do it and, and by case by case uh, analysis as well, because obviously, you know, don't want to be uh, tokenized for any means, but I think, the, the bigger picture maybe for this as well as I know we have a lot of members who do utilize those pharmacies uh, for their medication and so forth. So maybe this is perhaps a, uh, maybe a, a, you know, in, in that vein, uh, in a sense. So I'm not sure if this is the specifics, but I do hear you uh, in, re in regards to the whole, um, you know, land acknowledgements and reconciliation and all those pieces. Definitely our last, uh, you know, our last intentions are to ever be considered a tokenized, uh, you know, uh, leadership. Uh, Greg, and then over to Audrey. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree with Helen. Um, we're getting a lot of this uh, requests and to appear. Um, uh, the land acknowledgement too, and uh, on the board, the directors that I'm on, I've, I've requested that they remove it. It's almost, it's almost insulting in a way that, um, that they do that. And then they build on it, make money and, service um, non-native uh, population and I don't know if we could if we could make a statement on that or not or if we could come to some agreement to say you know um, that we either we either agree with it or we don't basically yeah, that was just my comment okay, thanks uh, thanks for that Greg and, and as you know that that discussion has been around this table for a long long time uh, in terms of you know land acknowledgements and so forth so Maybe perhaps we could do further again due diligence and have a more informed discussion on uh, that piece itself. But I think the other point as well is we do have an option, Council. It's not like we have to send people. I think if there's availability, if there's or if there's interest, I mean, then by all means. But if there isn't, then there's nothing wrong with us sending our regrets. Audrey. Yes, I I could see it in a different way. I like to look at things in a positive light, and this could be one more step to relationship building. And uh, who better than with Caledonia? So I agree that uh, Melba should go, and I, I commend her for that. Thank you. Okay, now for that. So see, already we're uh, having a, a discussion, and you see the points on the back on the back and forth of, of this issue as well. So I think, uh, again, we'll, uh, the, the land acknowledgement discussion, though, is definitely one that we can definitely continue to have and make a position to Greg's point. So maybe perhaps we can do a little bit more due diligence uh, on that front uh, to get us to a point of a decision and rather a statement to be further made on that in the bigger picture of land acknowledgements. I know it's been obviously a topic of discussion for a long time. Uh, Melba? Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, yeah, there's, uh, I, I don't see any negatives myself. I see positives. And I think it's a representative of the people that we attend there. And I, I agree, relationship building. I think it's convenience for our people to, to have that service close by as we have doctors 
in Caledonia now, and it's it's same in Brantford. You know, they have the service of of filling out, you know, um, doctors' uh, orders for our people. So I think it's very good. And if you go in there, you'll usually see other Native people. So we utilize. It's like uh, I guess other stores in in communities. Some go to Simcoe, have doctors there, and some are in Brantford. So I think wherever we're invited, if we can. To, to certainly represent the people and say, it's really saying thank you, even though you don't have to make a speech usually. So they do recognize you. It's like uh, Walk for Hospice. Uh, last year when I represented you, Mark, yeah, they mentioned the name Six Nations is here, uh, supporting us in, in what we're doing for, for the people. Thank you. That's a really, really good point. And now for your comments, uh, uh, Melba, on that. <clears throat> I see there's a few messages in the chat and do agree, you know, there's, um, I think that's an, an important piece is there always the relationship building that Audrey had mentioned as well as Melba. I mean, I think it, you'll notice even in terms of, you know, our um, upcoming bread and cheese event, you know, trying to, you know, reach out to all of the local, our local neighbors and so forth. So it's always, uh, I think, about that relationship and how we further build upon it. But there's still other other items, I think, in the bigger picture that we can further discuss. Uh, Hazel? Yeah, just one comment with regard to the Rexall. They do deliver the uh, prescriptions out on a reserve to the people. Um, I think they have quite a few that they, they actually deliver, and it's free that's delivery. So that's a good, good point. Most definitely. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, Helen. Yeah, I'm not saying anything against Rexall Pharmacy because I go there. Yeah. Sometimes it's just it's the uh, it's the the action of they only want us there because they want to show people that we're there. <laughs> but I have nothing against Rexall Pharmacy. I go there. Yeah, I, I totally uh, I totally hear you. And I do like your comment in terms of uh, the land acknowledgement. I mean, I think it's a good suggestion that, you know, you'd rather have people say that we stand with Six Nations and getting their land back and accounting of their monies. I think that's a really strong, bold statement that we should further have a discussion on in terms of, um, you know, land acknowledgements itself. Okay, so uh, Melba, again, do appreciate you uh, in attending uh, this uh, grand reopening. Um, and again, can always look to uh, the further furthering of relationship building. So it's really important. Uh, that's all I have on the agenda for this morning's general finance. At this point in time, I'll look to a mover and seconder to adjourn. Moved by Helen, seconder. I'll move that, Seconded by Sherry Lynn to adjourn. All in favor? Any opposed? Seeing or hearing that motion is carried. Now I want to everybody for joining us this morning on General Finance, and I hope you have a fantastic Monday uh, and enjoying the nice sunny, sunny day. Take care.